It's time for another edition of Live from Studio M. I'm Jesse Aaron on 105.5 Triple M. Today, a band whose sound has been called everything from hillbilly gangster to a drunken scarecrow who has been dragged behind a truck. We'll chat with them in just a moment, but first, a song from Blitz and Trapper. All right. All the boys sit on the fender as they watch the sun go down. And the lights shine like the end of things on the dark side of town. Well, we grew up here in August, picking fields after the rain. And the West was all the world knew us, and all the rest just fades away. All the best of friends, the worst of luck, never turned our hearts to stone. We were stupid and strange and young and hot.
And we are back on 105.5 Triple M. I'm Jesse Guerin with Live from Studio M. Today, Blitz and Trapper, and we are very excited to have you here in Studio M for this exclusive performance, the only performance in Madison. That's right. <laughs> now the whole gang is here, and I'm going to let uh, lead singer Eric Early go ahead and introduce everyone. Oh, okay. We got uh, we got Brian Cook over here doing some singing. He's usually playing drums. Um, I'm Eric Early. Uh, Marty Marquis here usually plays keys and he's singing. Uh, Eric Mintier is playing guitars, um, and then Mike's around here, he usually plays bass. All right, very good. Uh, let's start off, I guess, telling a little bit about uh, Blitz and Trapper, the Blitz and Trapper story. Uh, for those listening who aren't already familiar, uh, where does the band call home? We all live in Portland, Oregon. Yeah. Okay. And uh, the group has been together since around 2000, is that right? Uh, yeah. Yeah, we weren't called Blitz and Trapper back then, but yeah, we were playing music in our garage for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> what were you called back then? We had a weird name. We were called Garmin Bosia, which was a reference to a David Lynch movie. And we played this very psychedelic brand of music. And <laughs> How did you guys uh, end up coming all together as a, as a group? Well, you know, most of us grew up in, down in Sable Morgan and uh, either went to high school together or knew each other from playing in bands and stuff. And then I met Marty in college on, uh, on Lookout Mountain down in Georgia. And, uh, but he's, all, he's from Yakima, Washington, so we all kind of were from around the same area. Yeah. Gotcha. And uh, so there was a name change somewhere along the line? The yeah, Blitz around 05 or 06 or something like that. Yeah. Now, Blitz and Trapper, where did that name come from? You know, I've made up endless lies about where that name comes from. <laughs> My favorite lie is that it was, um, it's named after the Trapper Keeper that I had in sixth grade. <laughs> it was Christmas themed. And I would keep my, my, my little notes for my girlfriend, my sixth grade girlfriend, in that Trapper Keeper. Yeah. I think that's the lie that you believe the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, you said that there was a, there was a band name change, and uh, would you say that there was a, an evolution of your sound as well? Yeah, I think it's always evolving, always changing, and we'll probably continue to, to do so a little bit, yeah. All right. You have a new album <clears throat> that just came out on Friday, and we'll chat about that here in a moment. When did you uh, start really having the breakthrough success as Blitz and Trapper? Uh, you know, I think Wild Mountain Nation was the first record where we got, where we got some you know, national press and acclaim, and we were able to start touring, you know, back in 07. Um, so that's really when we were able to, to start doing it professionally, I guess. Fantastic. Do you recall when you first heard one of your songs on the radio? I don't. No? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All of a sudden you just woke up one day and the uh, radio's playing your music. Yeah, I mean, I think I heard it at a grocery store first, like a... Mm. Whole Foods or New Seasons or something, and I was like, oh, that's weird. <laughs> I heard it at Starbucks one time. Oh, yeah, yeah. okay. But, but yeah, I don't mean, but, um, who knows uh, how many people have gotten to know us because of radio play. Yeah. But I think there's also um, this layer of just passive uh, consumption of music. Like, there's always music playing somewhere, wherever you are, the supermarket, the mall. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so. All right, and you released a new album, All Across This Land, on Friday. I want to talk about that in just a moment, but first, why don't we get another song, Blitz and Trapper, on 105.5 Triple M. All right. <coughs> uh, this one's called Lonesome Angel. <laughs> Oh, yeah. 
change its course And I call you when I just can't find my voice This feeling that I've been feeling I just can't control To be on rest of no place left to go songs on this record sort of hang together more like I wrote them all kind of at the same time so they kind of speak to each other I think uh, the stories and whatnot um, and sonically we kind of took more time on getting the sounds and, and I think it sounds it's probably our biggest sort of slickest sounding record probably I reckon but yeah I mean I don't know I think it's up to the listener to sort of figure out what sets it apart I guess okay how, how long would you say it took you to, uh, to write many of the songs uh, I wrote them all probably within like a three month period. Okay. Yeah. What What's your biggest inspiration, I guess, for this album? Mm, like musical inspiration yeah, type deal? Things that happened in your life? Oh, um, there's a lot. I mean, I, I think in certain ways it's me looking back on, on Oregon as it was when I was growing up and stuff. And it's changed so much. There's so many people there now and the feeling of it's changed. Part of it, you know, I mean, I hate to say it, but part of it is me trying to sort of recapture, reminisce about, yeah, where I grew up and the fact that it's gone. I think everyone goes through that. But, you know, just the idea that where you come from is paved over and covered in America, because it, it happens all the time, you know. So moving on from the past. Yeah, I just started dealing with that and then using it just as, you know, ways to write songs, because I like to write songs, I guess. <laughs> gotcha. I was reading somewhere that uh, this album is more representative of a live Blitz and Trapper show. Would you agree with that? Yeah. It's definitely, I definitely wrote it for a five piece. You know, it was, there's not a lot of bells and whistles and extra stuff. It's just, uh, yeah, drums, bass, guitar, and piano, and singing. You know. Gotcha. Uh, now, this is kind of an abbreviated Blitz and Trapper show. Yeah. Let's talk about a full Blitz and Trapper show. What can people expect? 
Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it, it sort of runs a gamut from pretty hard rock stuff into a lot of country music and then into a lot of this folk music, too. It just kind of sort of covers the, the guitar music genre. <laughs> Any crazy stage antics among the guys? <laughs> like, uh, like lighting their guitar on fire? <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry to say. <laughs> what What are some of your uh, favorite songs that you like to do when you're in concert? Uh, of our own songs, you mean? Yeah. Sure. Oh, um, I mean, you know, we have a lot of songs that we have to play because everyone wants to hear them. And, right. You know, we do it like Black River Killer. Fur, Lady on the Water, stuff like that. Love the way you walk away, Fletcher. Um, you know, but then there's other songs that aren't on any of the main records that we still like to play, like Big Black Bird. And, you know, there's you know songs that folk songs that I like to play that aren't generally you know super popular. I guess I don't know. And are there any, is there any artists that you cover while you're in concert? Yeah, we covered a lot of stuff like Zeppelin. And, Lenny Kravitz, and right now we're covering Beatles stuff. We've covered Neil Young, and, uh, Thin Lizzy. And Towns you do a Towns Van Zandt Yeah, I've covered Towns over the years a few times, yeah. And I, I think you had one prepared. For yeah, me. yeah, we did. Um, um, yeah, this one's called If I Needed You. If I needed you, would you come to me? Would you come to me and ease my pain? If you needed me, I would come to you. I'd swim the seas for to ease your pain. In the night for long, oh, the morning. for fun. Sounds good. <laughs> so, I guess, Eric, or any of the guys, what advice do you live by? <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, man, that's a hard question. What do you got, Marty? Um, what do you got? Try to pay off my credit card bills every month. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, there you go. I remember my dad, he never gave me too much advice, but he, uh, 
you know, he, he told me, you know, guys are always going to look at other women, but you don't have to be obvious about it, Marty. Marty married. Where where do you see the band being in ten years from now? I don't know, man. I mean, we like playing music, yeah, you know, but you just never know what's going to happen. The music business is slowly disappearing, so it's kind of one of those things where, yeah, you just don't know. <laughs> I mean, hopefully play music in some fashion, yeah. All right. That's what I like to do. <laughs> who, who are you listening to right now? Who, uh, like if you had an iPod or an MP3 player, who would you find out there? Um, who am I listening to? Like, uh, man, I've really been listening to Sunbolt's first record, Trace. I love that record. Um, been listening to uh, the last few replacements records. Been listening to early Bangles records. Bob Seger. So an eclectic mix kind of all over the place. Yeah, it's all guitar rock, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you could open for any artist or any band, uh, do you have somebody in mind? Gillian Welch, maybe. Yeah, we probably could. Sure. Pretty bad. <laughs> wearing a jacket. I'm wearing a jacket. Sure. And I guess my last question, who would play you in the movie about Blitz and Trevor? Who would play me? Who would play you? Sure. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Marty would. Paul <laughs> I, think, I think Paul Rudd would play you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we've got time for one more song from Blitz and Trapper. So whenever you're ready, guys, I'm going to fly five triple numbers. Which one are you doing? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah.
from 